All right, good evening everybody and welcome to the VO Test Drive Q&A with myself, Terry Daniel, along with Tawny Plattis and Rob Marley. We are here to talk voiceovers. Oh, somebody's trying to get in the room. One second and we're really going to get started. All right, I'm going to, Tawny, it looks like you're in here twice. I don't know why that's, why you're showing up twice, but oh, now you're in once. Maybe you figured it out. All right, we're still waiting for a couple people to just kind of gradually get in here and that's totally fine got about 25 30 people in here right now um all right all right rob don't say anything yet but i did just unmute your mic all right rob can you hear us yep okay great one second <laughs> one moment please and tawny are you there i'm here oh say that again yeah, you're cutting off pretty bad. Can you say something again? Can you better? Yeah, you're cut. You're cutting. You're cutting in and out pretty bad. Let me try your other mic, because it looks like you're registered in here twice. Hang on a second. All right, let's try this, Tawny. How's that? All right, stand by, everybody. This happens every now and then. All right, let's try that. Can I? How do I now? Yeah, you're like it, you're really chopping up bad. Okay, some thing here. So I'm gonna mute you for now. And Rob, you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Can okay, you hear me? Great. Yeah, you're perfect. Cool. So that our presentation, we're gonna spend 20 minutes seeing if people can hear us. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all right, bear with us, you guys. This is uh, the first time all three of us are doing this together. So we want to make sure that everybody's audio is up to par. I'm gonna try Tawny again. Tawny, speak, please. I'm. Can you use that? Can you use like a built-in mic or something like that, Tawny? Because whatever you're using is really cutting out badly. Me from the laptop as opposed to the studio because I could not figure out how to yeah. set it up. Yeah. Yep. You're here now. You're here now and loud and clear. I was trying to get you to listen to me from the road NT1A, and it, for some reason, you know, they call me Tech Terrible Tawny for a reason. Nope, now you're good. So, all right, so here's what we want to do here. Now that I got Rob and Tawny, uh, everybody's going here. Uh, we are uh, ready to take any type of voiceover related questions. But what I wanted to start off with is just kind of telling a few stories about each of us here. I'll, I'll start with how I got into this. Uh, I got into voiceovers when, when my mom and dad, I'm pretty... I'm pretty humble guy, so I'm not afraid to admit this. My mom and dad bought me a Donnie and Marie uh, microphone that hooked up to an FM radio. So whatever the empty frequency was on the FM radio, my voice would come through it. Uh, you got Tawny, you're probably not old enough to remember those, but Rob, do you remember those? Hey, baby, I'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> that's, that's the Mr. Microphone. They were huge. And I was close enough. <laughs> I was about six or seven years old. So Mr. Microphone came out and then they came out with like a Barry Manilow one and then a Donnie oh and Marie God. one. And whatever empty frequency on your FM dial you could find, this microphone would uh, attach to it. So you could actually talk through the speaker of your radio. It was very bizarre and very entertaining back then. Uh, I actually on. had one of those. I had one of those in L.A., but there was no unused frequencies in L.A. on the FM dial. So it was kind of <laughs> yeah, kind of a waste of money out there. Uh, yeah. if, you're, if you're in suburban Minnesota, there were plenty of empty frequencies. <laughs> but that's how I got into voiceovers. And, uh, you know, I was uh, it's interesting because I kind of came from a radio theater background and uh, spent some time about six, seven years in radio and did a lot of onstage work and, and and did voiceovers, you know, kind of on a part time basis until about, you know, 12 or 13 years ago, where I really launched my business and went into it full time and really decided to, to take the plunge and 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 really take it seriously and make a move. Uh, I was flat broke when I did it. I took out a really shitty loan, pardon my language, with really high interest rates because I knew I, I just had to do anything to get out of rate corporate radio. <laughs> so uh, I did that many, many moons ago and got started. I, I knew I had to work my butt off uh, in order to make it work. And uh, honestly, I haven't looked back since. Uh, I've gone through different uh, stages of voiceover work. I did a few audio books and a lot of narration work at the beginning. 
uh, as of the last five years, a little more commercial work and a lot of theme park announcements. Now, this is something that wasn't around 20 to 30 years ago. You think theme park announcements, don't they just have some dude in an office at the amusement park that just does it through the PA system? Well, that was the case in the 80s. But now we send MP3s to people uh, who are in charge of these kinds of accounts. So, you know, if you're on a roller coaster and the roller coaster is kind of coming around the bend and you kind of hear that voice that says, please keep your hands and feet inside the car until the car comes to a complete stop. Uh, you know, that might be my voice because I've done a ton of that stuff. But uh, so I've been a voice actor for, you know, over 20 years and the teaching end of it, people always say, well, well how do you, you know, why do you teach your competition? Uh, I used to be a drama coach, so I really enjoy the educational part of the program. I like teaching just about as much as I, I do the voice acting in general. I really like being a mentor. I like guiding people in the right direction and helping them with their business. I know Rob and Tawny are very good at that as well, and I'm going to let them talk in, in just a minute. So it's really for the love of teaching. Um, I really enjoy it. So let's bring on Rob. Before I get to you, I want to introduce Tawny Plattis. Everybody can give her a round of applause. Yay. Hi, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So Tawny, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your background and what you, you are taking the voiceover industry by storm and you really haven't even been a part of it for that long, but you had a lot of, you have a ton of marketing experience. You ran a successful retail operation and uh, tell us a little bit about your background and how that kind of, you know, transpired into getting into voice acting. It's actually pretty cut and dry. I came out of the womb imitating everything that I saw. I was obsessed with entertainment, obsessed with all things performing. I was raised in a business family and we were told we could either become a doctor, a lawyer, or own a business. So with my college fund, I got a loan for $100,000 and bought a store, was in debt up into my eyeballs and turned it around within a year and was making a profit. Um, cool. After that, thank you. After that, a few years, I built it up so I could um, sell it and then start my real love, which was voice acting and have kind of, you know, the time to be able to relax and really enjoy building it up and not be stressed because retail is so stressful. And in between all of those areas of my life, I was a theater actor as a child and well into high school. And now I'm pursuing voice acting and coaching others on how to start their businesses as well. It's kind of a formula and I'd like to share it. <laughs> yeah, very cool. You know, it's that's that's the way I teach too. I just teach people what works. You know, it's like, you know, you, do you stumble and run into a few roadblocks here and there? Well, absolutely. That's part of being in business. But, uh, and I know we have a lot of passionate people, not only in voiceover camp, but people that email us going, man, you guys look like you're having so much fun doing this. And we just really want to know, you know, how we can do it. So we're going to shed some light on that as well. Uh, I, thank you, Tony. I want to bring and Rob Marley, who's been uh, doing this for a while as well. Rob, what? Uh, when did your love of being a voice actor? When did that get started? Give us a little bit about your background. It's it's actually funny. I used to work at an amusement park, but I worked in the entertainment department, uh, working with like live bands and shows and stuff like that. And we would always have these pre-recorded spiels, you know, telling people like, you know, we're expecting a full house, a so move to the center of the theater, and blah blah blah. And after a while, we all got tired of playing the spiels on cart, so we would start doing them live, uh, just over the you know the talkback mic in the, right. in, in the theater. And I just got used to to talking on microphone. It was great because everybody was looking the opposite direction. I was the voice, you know, in the booth in the back behind the everybody, so it was no big deal. So I got really comfortable talking on mic, and I just have been doing that for a while. And every every job I've had since then has been in the entertainment business somehow, like in video production or TV production and stuff like that. And they've always needed a voice for something. And I've said, well, you know, I can do it. And, and it was that classic thing. Like people always told me I had a great voice. So <laughs> oh yes. I, just, I went with it. So yeah. And, and it was like a few years ago, uh, a friend of mine gave me a laptop or a tablet uh, PC as a Christmas gift. And it was like one of those things that went, hey, I can record audio with this. And there's no sound. There's no noise that it generates. There's no fan. There's no spinning hard drive. And it was like, ooh, I could do voiceover at home. And then the light went off and went, why am I not doing this at home? So right. that's what I've been doing. 
Yeah, with technology, you know, years and years ago, it was all, you know, you had to show up at different studios. And that was really where agency work was really dominating the industry. And that really isn't the case anymore, you guys. I mean, even if you don't get on a talent agency roster, I've had people that wanted to jump off of a cliff because they got rejected from an agency. I mean, that's part of being in business as well. I still get, after being in this industry and having the success that I've had after all these years, I'll still get an agent that'll write back to me in an email. Uh, you sound kind of amateurish. You should get some coaching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, I've been doing this full time for about 15 years. You know, I try to take it like a professional. I have to admit my ego kind of takes over and there's usually a, a snarky comment or two. I'm sure that's not shocking. Um, but, you know, with agency work, you know, you're going to get people that absolutely love your demo. You're going to get people that don't like it. Um, and you're going to get you're going to get both sides. And just because you get rejected doesn't mean that you're terrible and that you should give up. You know, it has not a lot of times it has nothing to do with your talent. Sometimes you won't get on an agency roster because they have a voice that sounds similar to yours. I've gotten that, too. So uh, the good news for everybody on this call is you can get a lot of work, a lot of well-paid work by working in as an independent contractor, working with different producers, audiovisual directors at corporations, explainer video companies, uh, you know, independent authors. I mean, there's so many different avenues that we just didn't have 20 to 25 years ago when you really had to rely on that talent agent to get work. And agents are still terrific people I, with nuts agency locally here. And they're absolutely fantastic. They've been so good to me. And, you know, it's good. It's good to be able to do both. It's good to be able to do self-contractor work and also agency work. And if you have a good kind of 50-50 balance, uh, you know, you're, you're going to do very, very well. Um, so, Rob, tell me a little bit of, you know, what really because, you know, you and Tawny are both very solid marketing minds. And tell me a little bit about what works best for you when you're getting clients. Well, you know. I, I've discovered that sitting on my butt, not doing anything really doesn't work. So, <laughs> as much as we would love to just sit here yeah. and have people knock on our door going, wow, I heard you had a magical voice. Yeah. Here's a million dollars. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, what seems to work, you know, I, I hate to say it, but the, the, the thing that's worked for me is the, the classic cold calling, you know, yeah, finding, yeah. finding production companies that already use voiceover talent. And and then calling the casting director or the person in charge of of hiring voiceover talent and saying, hey, you know, are you accepting demos from from voiceover talent? I'm a voice artist. And can I send you mine? And they'll say, yeah, sure, whatever. And send me the, you know, send me an email. And that's worked. You know, it's 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 not always the, the greatest way. It's like panning for gold. You're spending a lot right. of time, you know, grinding it out, trying to find that one or two jobs that that will will happen. And then the trick is to you know is to get them coming back you know it's a lot yeah. easier to to have a returning client than it is to try and find a new one so you know make them happy make sure that you're you know doing everything on time and and be just over the top when it comes to customer service that really is the key is you know because i mean there's a million voices out there so it's for for a a, a person that's doing the hiring they have to kind of think, okay, what what's going to make this person special? And if you're easy to work with and you're getting your job, you know, if you get the the finished work in better than, you know, sooner than they expected it, you know, uh, over promise and under promise and over deliver you know, is what I always, always say. And, you know, if you can do that, you usually get them coming back saying, hey, you know, you were great the last time. Here's another job for you. Well, that's really the ticket. You know, one of the biggest myths, and there's a lot of them out there. I mean, if you go to eHow and some of these crazy sites where, you know, all these so-called uh, VO chefs are in the kitchen giving out advice, which is terrible, uh, just be careful what you read out there, too. Because one of the biggest myths that I read out there is that you need so many clients to be able to make a decent living. No, you don't. If you have a dozen clients who are using you on a regular basis, uh, you're making a terrific living. That's all I have. I have 12, 13, maybe 14 clients who come back to me on a regular basis. And then, of course, I get new clients that kind of come as they go. Sometimes they come back. Sometimes they don't. Uh, you really only need a handful that are going to come back to you on a regular basis. So that's a that's a good point that uh, that Rob makes for sure. And I, I've really had a lot of success. I get a dozen brand new clients every year just by having a presence on social media, you know, using Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. I mean, these are weapons. They're not just a fun thing where you can you know, post a cat picture or a close up of your, you know, pepperoni pizza or your beer. 
Oh, wait a minute. I post pictures of my beer every day. Never mind. I, I do uh, that too. I'm the same way. <laughs> but there, it's more than that. You can use those to connect with talent agencies, production companies, and voiceover buyers, You know, especially on Twitter. Rob, you've done an amazing job in uh, accumulating lots of different followers on Twitter, and I'm sure that's helped your business. Uh, it has actually. Uh, it, I get I get approached all the time from actually I get approached all the time from voiceover artists saying, "Hey, you know, can you listen to my voice and what do you think and uh -huh. and and stuff like that." But it's it's worked great with uh, I, it's it's worked really good with staying in touch with uh, with clients too. Like a, a great thing that I do is uh, is well, I don't want to call it stalking, but it's it's stalking. <laughs> uh, there, you know, whenever you're if there's a production company I'm interested in. Uh, and and they have an active Twitter profile or a social media profile. I'll I'll follow them. I'll watch what they're doing, and when they post something interesting, I'll say, "Hey, that's really cool," or you know, yeah. whatever it is. Or, and I'll try and and get an you know an interaction going with them. And and the whole idea is to stay on their radar. You know, it's like yeah. there's that Rob Marley again. You know, and and oh by the way, I'm a voice artist. If you ever need any work, you know, that's that's kind of how it goes. You don't try and go through the front door saying, you know, here's what I do. Hire me. It's more yeah, like it's you, know, not, you have to become their salesy. friend first. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to be you don't want to be too salesish. It's like, hey, need a voiceover? Click on the link for my rate card. You know, it's nothing like that. Exactly. You have to engage with people and be their friend. You know, you it, it's kind of like you're trying to be the life of the party on Twitter. You know, if you go to a party, you don't want somebody to sell you Tupperware. It's just, a, it, you know, you're going to try to get as far away from that person as you possibly can. Um, right. So, Tawny, tell me a little bit about, because uh, you're getting a lot of work right now. Tell me a little bit about what's working for you. What's working for me is actually, I, I'm a little hesitant to say because of the controversy in the groups, but I actually really have a lot of success on pay to play sites. Um, well, I, and, and first of all, first of all, controversy in the groups is just that controversy in a forum is not a real controversy. That's true. That's true. But that's go ahead. True. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just I, I know there's there's some strong emotions, but um, I do really, really well with pay to play. I'll find that client and they continue to be repeat clients like how rob was saying you find that one person and for me it's video games a lot of times yeah. is i'll just find the audition for that video game and that person's like oh my god that's amazing can you do this voice too and i'm like hell yeah i can do that voice too and then you just you make friends with them the that's the biggest thing like rob said it's kind of like that stalking thing you just want to make <laughs> yeah. friends with clients though you know like i send them snapchats all the time all instagram i'm like oh my god your daughter's so cute how sweet you know and they're like oh you know what i need some work done i'm like i thought you did <laughs> so, <laughs> thought well, you would <laughs> you're a good you're a good networker i know you're uh you're a big part of the podcast community and you've been kind of working that angle uh to get work as well i know you do your own podcast which of course you can you can plug here if you'd like and then tell us a little bit about not only from doing your own podcast, but being a part of that community. Tell us how that's gotten you a lot of work. Being a part of that community has been incredible because they need people for editing. They need people for outros, for intros. They need hosts. They need interviewers that they want to learn. So for me as a business coach, marketing coach, as well as a voiceover coach, that's been really great for me as far as getting, you know, connected with people that are interested in what I do, all of those people are interested in that. And a lot of times they, even if they're not voice actors, they're full-time podcasters, they know somebody who needs somebody. So a lot of how I base my career off of is simply networking. I make friends with absolutely everybody. And then, you know how you were saying the lady at the Tupperware party, I could sell Tupperware at a party. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, no, it's cracked. Here, have mine. She's like, wow, this Tupperware is great. And I'm like, it really is. And that's how you sell Tupperware. You make friends with them first. Oh, my God, that's incredible. And and Tawny definitely is a force on social media. And I know for a fact that that has gotten you work. It has. Yeah, it definitely has. Just posting posting the right stuff on social media, commenting the right stuff. It's it is making friends with people and that's how you get those jobs it's it truly networking has not changed just the format in which we network has changed it's online now you don't necessarily have to go to the cocktail parties i'm sure it's still yeah. great to 
actually meet people in person, but you don't have to go schmooze with Don Draper at a get together anymore. It's that that's online. <laughs> Wait, I want to schmooze with Don Draper. He was cool. Oh, oh, yeah, he, was, he was very, very cool. Well, so cool. you know, we're living in the technology, of course, where you can just do it all from home. And, you know, I see, you know, there's, there's students that we're currently working with that are a part of this group. And I really appreciate the fact that they're in here because they're proof that they didn't just sit around, you know, wishing and thinking about this, you know, it, uh, they're doers and it's people that get off the fence and they actually, you know, invest in some good coaching and training. They get the good demos. They start moving the, uh, you know, moving the needle on the marketing and, you know, the fear factor sets in once in a while. You're like, you know, uh, you know, fear of failure or, oh my God, I don't want to get rejected or, you know, how do, what do I do? You know, and first off, I want to, come, you know, I want to set the record straight here. We're not here to sell our program tonight. Uh, I could easily go through all of the pages of our website and show you all of our programs. You know, if you're interested in hearing more, you can certainly message one of us via Facebook and we'd be happy to, to share some information on that. But we're not here to like go through the website and talk about the different uh, programs. Of course, they all kick ass. But, <laughs> but we're not here to solicit that. We want to just talk about the business and just basically talk about what we did. You know, Tawny was passionate, so she went for it. Rob was passionate about being a voice actor, and he went for it. I know, Donna, you're in here somewhere. You were very passionate, and you went for it. Uh, Kelly Brooks, you're in here. You were very passionate about becoming a, a voice actor, and you didn't just sit there wishing, waiting, and hoping, you know, sitting there waiting for somebody to knock on your door. You just went for it. And I want to encourage people who are really passionate about getting into voiceovers to jump off the fence and go for it, because that's what all three of us did. And uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I, I tell you what, it sure beats sitting in rush hour, uh, you know, going to that seventh corporate, that mandatory corporate meeting, <laughs> you know, in some big building, obviously, you know, and I respect many of you that are still doing that because I used to do that. But, you know, if you don't want to do that forever, you know, you need to make a move. So that's my, that's my little sermon for now. Uh, I think it's time, uh, if you guys don't mind, you guys being Tawny and Rob, I think we should take some questions about the voiceover business. Now, you know, I wouldn't mind taking a couple of live questions. So if you, if anybody wants to uh, give us a, a live question, just say, unmute my mic in the question box there, and then I'll look for you on the list and uh, I will do that. So let me know if you want to speak live. Actually, you know what? Actually raise the virtual hand in the go to, my God, how many group classes have I taught? And I just forgot to say that. <laughs> probably about 300 of them because that's how people do script reads when we do our group classes every other week. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question live, uh, please raise the virtual hand in the go to webinar widget and we shall call upon you. Uh, one second here. I'm going to scroll down. And if, if not, that's okay. You can just post your question in the little box and one, you know, myself, Rob, or Tawny, or maybe all three of us can do our best to, to answer that question. One second. Andrew, I'm coming for you. That sounded way too intimidating. My apologies for that. <laughs> all right, Andrew, how are you, man? I'm doing well. I'm not sure if I want to answer ask my question anymore if you're coming for me. I'm a little bit. <laughs> I know. You're under arrest, you son of a... No, I'm kidding. Uh, not the first time I've heard that today. No. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, so... my friend, and ask the question. Uh, my question is in reference to marketing. So I know obviously marketing plays a big part but in any business, uh, especially when you're building a brand to uh, to make sure that you get a foothold into the marketplace. I'm just curious in terms of when you're doing your digital marketing, uh, is there a template that you send out for email contacts? Uh, you know, something that I'm considering now is to uh, reach out to film and TV production companies that are in my area. I'm in Germany, so I'm a little bit far from you guys, but uh, the market here is actually very good for native speakers because they are trying to do some more international work and they don't have as many native speakers to do the narrations. That's so a, that's a really good question. And, you know, Tawny, I'm going to throw this one to you because you're, you know, you're a solid marketing mind. That's how we kind of ended up working together. Uh, do you want to address his question there? Definitely. Um, with that, I would first, my first thing that jumped out in my head is that you are in Germany and you're speaking of native speaker as in a native English speaker is what they're looking for. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I muted. I muted his mic. Hang on a second. Andrew, did, <laughs> Andrew, did you hear? Did you hear her question? Uh, yes, I did hear the question. I, I, I was already arrested. I thought that's why. Um, <laughs> yes, I, exactly. Because I'm a native speaker of English in a, in a non-native speaking market. There's a, a higher demand for it. Oh, that's wonderful. You're you're in a good spot. I do actually have a template that I use for production agencies. What I would suggest to you is doing some research in your specific area as well. That's something that I always do for my own emails. But yeah, getting a template together and something short, sweet that says what you offer that nobody else has, which is that native English speaking, that is something that you would want to have to send out to production companies as far as like a template goes. It's you know, just something basically like, hey, can I send you my always ask to never just like bombard somebody with your demos. <laughs> they don't they don't like that. But you would kind of ask them like, hey, I'm a voice talent. Are you looking for a native English speaker? I'd love to send you my demos. Does that answer your question? I had to mute the only I muted them again. The only reason I mute the mics right after they ask is to to because there's a little there's too much feedback if there's too many people unmuted at the same time. Um, but uh, let's let's find out. Andrew, does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I don't mean to hit the mute button too quickly there, but uh, that is really good stuff. Um, I'm going to address a question that DC Campbell has just posted in the question box. At age 62, is that too old to get started? Absolutely not. I mean, listen to how mature your voice is. Uh, a lot of successful voice talents around the country are in their 50s and above. Uh, there's There's no age limit for this you're never too young or too old to get started because there's a market for every kind of age range i mean look at look at anime and 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 projects like that for the younger talents you know dc you're 62 maybe audiobooks or e-learning narration you know commercials there's really a market for every age you know i get people that call me up on the phone and they're like 39 years old and they think they're over the hill i'm like oh god i, I <laughs> I, I would hope not. I think that would be a really good age uh, to get started. And uh, so I hope that answers your question. Thank you, DC. That's a, that's a very, that's a good and honest question. And um, let's answer it. Anybody want to ask another live question? Just raise the virtual hand in the GoToWebinar widget, and then I can come down and uh, unmute your mic. Daniel, is it Edder? Oh, I recognize him from VoiceOver Camp. Let's take his question live. Uh, Daniel, good evening. Good evening. How was are it, you? Was sir? it my? Oh, I was. I was just wondering. Was it my furry eyebrows that that kind of stuck that image in your mind of who I am? Well, I'm actually I'm actually using a hair from your furry eyebrows to floss. I, right I now. thought so. <laughs> I, I use I, I use them regularly. So <laughs> thank you for that. And I can't. Um, I, can't it, I can't believe they came flying through the go to webinar <laughs> widget. And now I'm like <laughs> that. That wasn't really a raise your hand. That's actually uh, my eyebrows with an arrow pointing towards your your monitor. So, oh, that's awesome. Uh, it's disgusting. Anyhow, hey, I got a I got a few questions for you. Um, okay. I, I kind of have one up, that hit us, in the interest of time, hit us up with one. Okay. Um, how exactly do you roll across uh, production companies? What was the question again? I, no, my mic. Do, oh, sorry. How do you roll across? How do you find production companies? I've done a lot of Google searches, and there's a lot of convoluted information out there, or you end up rolling across. Uh, just a lot of different random stuff that's not actually tied into voiceover. I'm going to mute your mic because that's a great question. I have a lot of luck on uh, productionhub.com, voicebank.net. I know that's a familiar name today because of their uh, voices.com just made the acquisition to purchase voicebank.net, uh, which doesn't affect what they're going to put on voicebank.net. I, uh, I, I still love the site. Too, because it's got every single talent agency and production company listed, not only in this country, but uh, overseas as well. So that is a that is an excellent resource to find uh, production companies. Of course, Google is always your friend. You can also Google it too. Uh, Rob Marley, uh, how have you been able to find production companies? I know that you you're familiar with Production Hub, but do you have any other uh, resources? Uh, Mandy. Mandy.com. I, 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 yes. They've been a great resource to find uh, uh, production companies that specialize in specific things. Like it's, it's, it can sometimes get kind of tricky with with a Google search 
you know, to if you're looking for, you know, production companies for 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 stuff. But Mandy, it's it's nice because it kind of groups it by, you know, commercial TV production or or uh, theatrical film production or, you know, or or stuff. It, it, it groups it into different subcategories and makes it a lot easier. And you can group it by state. So if I wanted to look for just production companies in North Dakota, I, I you know, I'm sure there's a few. Yeah, it, you know that'd be a that'd be a perfect one. A perfect uh, Mandy's a perfect resource for that because it it lists them all. And I mean, you still have to go through, and and do your due diligence. You have to like click on the link and look at the website of the company and find out some more information about them. You know, basically do some recon before you contact them. And you can't just yeah. use a phone find the find the phone number or God forbid find the info at businessname.com address. Because that'll get you nowhere. That's that just goes to a gatekeeper. That's just gonna probably, you know, not li- not read the emails. Or if it's not interesting to them, they won't they won't reply. So it's it's about, you know, t- doing the research and finding out who's the person that does the hiring and find their name. Go to LinkedIn and see if you can find them that way and see if you can do something to get their email address. And if you can get their email address, then you can get you can you know send them a a, a quick little intro email. Or go through the front door and call the phone, you know, call the main number and ask to speak with the casting director or the hiring, you know, the person in charge of hiring voice talent and and go that way. I mean, nobody likes to cold call because nobody likes to talk on the phone. I hate talking on the phone. I, I absolutely can't stand it. I'm I'm so nervous when I do it. But it's a great way to go, you know. And if you do your research ahead of time, if you already know that this company is, you know, specializes in car commercials and you want to get into automotive voiceover you know that's that's the way to do it is to do the research find the company talk find the person's name and and call them directly you know that's that's worked really well yep that is a great answer Uh, angela is here uh tawny i think you may have talked with her a little bit on facebook but i'm not sure but she's got a really good question here hey guys i've been wanting to do vo forever uh my quick answer before even reading the rest of your question angela is all right, let's go. Uh, (laughs) That's my knee. That's my quick knee jerk reaction. I'm 46 and want to get started. Fear of recording and technology scare me. I am overwhelmed. Well, that's something that a coach can definitely help you with. Uh, How important is this in order to get started? Uh, You know, I like to think that, you know, having success in voiceovers is following things step by step. You know, working with a coach to get your technique and your delivery down, you have to be able to bring the acting out of voice acting. You have to be able to interpret and read these scripts the way the client wants them to be read. I know everybody kind of gets gear lust and they put the cart before the horse and they want to start buying microphones and headphones and monitors and preamps and all that's great fun. But, you know, you don't want to do that before you really get your reads down because it's it's the acting that's going to get you the work, not the two thousand dollar microphone, not the uh, not the whisper room, not the porta booth. It's you. It's your skill set. It's your acting skills. That's why we're always uh, you know, we're, we're pretty candid when we always recommend coaching because we've all been through it. The three of us on this call and many other people in this room who are currently working with us. Uh, are working on scripts like every single day. You know, even if I'm not coaching with somebody live, I'm sending them scripts, giving them some thorough direction. They're recording multiple takes. They're sending them to me and I'm giving them candid feedback. Constantly moving forward is really the the key to success. So that's mm-hmm. that's pretty important. And I know that you're aware of the classes, Angela, because you said that in here too. But, uh, you know, getting the coaching up front, you know, getting the demos, you know, slowly kind of working in the gear and then marketing, you know, like a madman or mad woman uh, really helps. I mean, Tawny, when you knew that you wanted to do this, I mean, you blinked and you pretty much went for it. Absolutely. For me, that that was how I was raised, too, though, is it was like, yeah, start a business. If it doesn't work, start another one. You know what I mean? It's like they're that's just how it works. You have to take that risk. You have to go for it. And you're never going to know if you're going to be successful unless you do it. And I'm not really one to sit around. If I make up my mind that something's going to happen, it's going to happen and I find a way. So that was kind of how voiceover started with me. And to address the tech side, like I, I make references to that constantly. I'm Tawny, the tech terrible. I'm awful at it. (laughs) Oh my God. No, I look at the mic and the mic will break. And I'm like, I'm not even touching it. I'm just looking at it. Um, so the tech part is intimidating. I totally understand that, but that's why you get a good coach because your coach can help you with that tech stuff. And we have a really great community of people that 
can walk you through that, that can help that. And it's absolutely part of coaching and it's not quite as scary anymore, but everybody has challenges in the industry and tech shouldn't be one of those ones that prevents you from going after your dreams because mostly what this is about is building a business more than anything is maintaining. I could not agree more. And it's Angela Colville. Awesome. Thank you. I'll be in touch. She gave me a ha ha starting today. Tawny, aren't you, you're the one that's been talking with her. Is that, does that sound familiar? Does her name sound familiar? Yes. Yeah. So Angela, go ahead and message Tawny on Facebook after the webinar and uh, we can get you going on that. Again, we're, we're not here to say, okay, sign on the dotted line right here, but we do want to keep that open. So after the webinar, you know, we'll be around on Facebook. If you want to send us a private message, if you'd want information on our program, I basically, you know, I've been coaching for a really long time. My programs uh, have been terrific. At least that's what my mentees tell me. But it was time mm -hmm. to kind of do a little bit of a makeover on it. I wanted to bring in Tawny, who's a solid talent marketing mind, Rob, who's an excellent script coach and a dynamic talent. And uh, both of them are just overall fun to, to be with. I'm going to start crying. Aww. You know, you big and, sack of sugar. and really important, Josh Risser, who's a talented web designer. I wanted to bring him in. So if somebody wanted to do the full big kahuna program where they wanted to get coaching and demos done and a, and a uh, well-branded, well-crafted website, that option is available. Um, so I wanted to kind of, I just wanted to, to, to build it up just a little bit differently. So uh, we'll go on to uh, asking, you know, if you have any questions, Bree, you were late to the webinar. You know, that's okay. Bree is actually a mentoree of ours now, and you're going to learn plenty of this stuff uh, in, uh, in your coaching sessions. Uh, does anybody else have a question to ask live? Just go ahead and raise the virtual hand in the go to webinar widget. We've got about 10 minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. And I do appreciate, uh, all the, the activity. We've got about almost 40 people on this call. Jeffrey BB or Beeb, my sincere apologies if I'm not, uh, saying your last name correct, but good evening, Jeffrey. Good evening, everyone. Uh, you had it right the first time. It's BB. BB. Jeffrey BB is in the house. Well, good evening. Good. Uh, hi. So I was recently approached by a colleague who said that he needs a voice talent and he hasn't liked the people who've auditioned so far. Knowing that I have an acting background and he appreciates the, sa the sound of my voice, which is nice to hear, I suppose, uh, he's asked yeah. me to create and submit a voice reel so that he can hook me up for this spot he needs. Now, if I like it, I'll consider finding a coach and jumping into a career, but I don't have a reel yet. and I've never really considered my own vocal range. What can I do to bridge that divide? Well, the first thing you can do is stop calling it a reel. Sure. <laughs> you know, That's what I he called it. Sorry. I'm just giving you my candid opinion here. You want to start. It's just it's a voiceover demo. Sure. And uh, I'm going to mute your mic because I'm getting a little feedback here. And, you know, if this is just a piece where you're auditioning for somebody and if if they don't really if they just want to hear your voice, you know, go. You can even you know, some people will even accept auditions via the voice memo app on a droid or an iPhone. That might be a way to to get that to them. So. Um, but again, of course, you know, if you're going to really dive into this and take it seriously, obviously getting some coaching and getting a couple demos professionally produced would be our sound advice. But, you know, if, if somebody wants, hey, you know, just send me over something, we might want to hire you for something. That would definitely be a way to do it. You can use Audacity online, which is a free recording software. Uh, it's limited, but it works well. And uh, that would be the way to go, even using the built in mic on your again, depending on if, if they're not really concerned with audio quality, you can use the uh, the built in mic on your laptop. We've got a ton of questions coming in, so I kind of want to keep rolling. Uh, Lainey Hobbs, Tani, am I pronouncing her correctly? Oh, Lainey, that's my girl. Lainey, she is uh, she has just signed up with us. So uh, congratulations to her. We can't wait to, to start working on her coaching sessions. Um, once you're ready to job search, where would you search? We kind of went over that a little bit earlier, you know, voice bank, production hub, Mandy, you know, just Google searches. That's, you know, that's all we ever did uh, and continue to do. And is there an indeed... Is there an indeed for VO? I don't know. Oh, a, a need for VO? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there? Of course, there's a huge need for VO more than ever before, just because of all the platforms out there and all the different, uh, you know, there's training materials, there's theme park announcements, commercials, narrations, audiobooks, on hold messages, podcast intros and outros. I mean, city crosswalks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking crosswalks. I oh, mean, there's my a voice God. Yeah. Countdown, counts down the number of seconds before the, 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 yes. the light changes. You know, yep. You could, you could be the voice at the airport. I mean, they're just, they're, there is audio attached to just about everything right now. And it really is a remarkable way to uh, make a living. So that's, uh, we're glad that you're uh, signed up and, and ready to go, uh, Lanny. So, Lanny, not Lanny. Why do I keep calling her Lanny? What's that, Tony? Laney. <laughs> Laney. I don't know why I keep saying that. My Laney, my sincere apologies. It will never, ever happen again. Uh, Mona. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, to be as far as like a need for voiceover goes, um, if you do some research, there was actually a study for 2017. Digital is exploding. There is more content than there is enough talent for. The time to get into voiceover is now. There is so much work. So to answer that question, I just wanted to let you know there's there are statistics and numbers behind why this is an amazing time to start your voiceover business. I'm sorry I'm using my built-in mic on the computer. <laughs> no, we hear, you, we hear you just fine. It, it sounds great. Yeah. And, and that's well said. And, you know, I always get, well, I hear voiceovers is so competitive. I mean, if you look at any creative industry, let's, let's talk photography. Let's talk on-camera acting. Let's talk music and musicians and doing that kind of work. Uh, being a stage actor in Broadway, you don't think that's competitive? Those industries are 50 times more competitive than voice acting. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that voiceover isn't competitive, but oh my goodness, my wife is a, uh, my wife Tracy is a successful photographer and uh, she's very good at it. And she did, you know, the same things that we did. You know, she had to make a financial investment into her business. She worked with three or four different photography coaches. She took classes. She kept working, working, working at it. She made her mistakes. She stumbled. She kept getting up. And uh, God bless her. You know, she's got a, a, a muscle condition called dystonia that just would not keep her down. Um, and I realize, you know, financial things can get in the way. But I told you before, I took out a crap. I, I'm, in, I'm not embarrassed to admit this. I'm very humble to admit this. Years and years and years ago, I took out the crappiest loan with like a 39% interest rate. <laughs> you know, mm. You know, it was like, uh, yeah, I paid back much more than I took out. It was one of those really crappy capital loan type things. And you know what? I, I had to do it because it was my love of actually being able to be a voiceover artist. I'm like, you know what? I have to do it to make it happen. And, uh, you know, it worked out. I have not looked back since. Um, one second. We got some great questions here. Does anybody want to ask another live one? We are due for a lot. James Emmert, I think he's fairly brand new to voiceover camp, and we're happy he's here tonight. I'm going to unmute his mic. James, are you there, my friend? James Emmert, come in. James? All right, we're going to mute him. James, uh, I'll try that again a little bit later. If anybody has a live question how about we take somebody that i'm currently working with kelly brooks you guys know kelly brooks hi kelly hi kelly we're here for you kelly good evening to you my brain is starting to kind of float around here a little bit <laughs> i'm like good af evening <laughs> how is everybody good how are you doing good crazy busy but good well before you even say this i saw a couple of your facebook pictures and i gotta say i was so jealous that you were at the guns and roses concert at u.s bank stadium where the vikings play i was so jealous i didn't want to talk to you for a week <laughs> it was a great great show oh yeah. my goodness i saw your photos and i went oh my god i had i had seen metallica there a year ago yeah and uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh you look like you were having a lot of fun but uh, uh we appreciate you being here tonight i know you didn't have to be here because of course you're already a mentoree of mine so why don't you go ahead with your question and let us know what's on your mind i'm curious um how you establish prices as a as a new artist so that you know obviously you don't want to give your work away but you want to get work and start getting established so how do you how do you establish that line and and figure out where you should be where prices are concerned? 
I'm going to mute your mic. That's a great question. I always try to, if, if I'm working as a self-contractor, I always try to find out what, from the client what the budget is. And that doesn't mean, oh, we got $900 budgeted for this project. That doesn't mean I come back and say, yep, that's my rate, 900 bucks. That sounds good. <laughs> you know, I don't do anything like that, but I do come close because they've already put that pool of money to the side for the voice actor. So that is your money to take, honestly. That doesn't mean you can't give them just a little bit of a deal. But that's how I work with when I'm doing self-contractor work. Um, if you are booked through a talent agency, Kelly, those are standard non-union rates. Uh, usually they go hourly, depending on if it's a commercial or narration. And you also get paid on you know how much time the commercial is going to air out there and in what markets. So the, the rates are really all over the place uh, when it comes to agency gigs versus working as a non-union talent in an independent contractor way. I know this sounds overwhelming. Kelly, you and I will touch base on that in a marketing meeting as well. But uh, I'll, throw this, I, I'll throw this to Rob. Rob, what do you have to say? I was just about to say, can I answer that? Um, I, I, I answer this question a lot because a lot of people think, okay, when they when they just started get, getting started in the business, it's like, okay, I, I, you know, what should I charge? You know, cause I, I'm new. I want to give them a, you know, uh, should I charge a lower rate because I'm new? And the answer is hell no. You charge what you can charge. I mean, whatever, whatever that rate is, I mean, you, you need to, you need to kind of figure out what the ballpark is, but don't downgrade yourself or don't discount yourself just because you're new because the client, well, first of all, the client's not going to want to know that you're new. So don't tell the client that you're new and there's no reason for the client to know that you're, you know, that this may be your very first gig, right? If you're, if you're good at, at, you know, at, at delivering, boy, I can't talk for a living. Can I, if you, if you're good <laughs> at delivering the words, uh, it, that's all that matters to the client. It, 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 if this is your first job or your 500th job, it doesn't matter. As long as you can give, deliver the, the, the voiceover, the way the client needs, that's all that matters to them. So they don't need to know that this is your first gig. So never, you know, discount what you what you charge just because you're brand new in the business. Because then you'll get, because then you'll get screwed. Because then you know yeah. you may get that client, you know, okay, great, hey, this this guy, uh, this voiceover artist that we used only charges a hundred dollars for this, you know, five minute uh, video. Let's use them again, and then you're stuck, you know, because yeah. now you're stuck to having to, you know, or you're trying to fight to get your to raise your rate up. Yeah. So always go in at the level that you're most comfortable with. I have one client right now that I'm working with that <clears throat> he was one of my first clients that I had and, Oh God, he's, he's just hammering me on the rate. And, and it's at the point now where I'm just going to have to say, look, this is what I charge. And you know, I can, I'm sure you can find somebody that's going to do it for less, but this is who I am. And this is, this is what I'm willing to, to, to charge for it, you know, for my work. You know, your, your, your effort has value. So, so bid, you know, offer accordingly, you know, that's, that, that is a, uh, that, that is a really, really good answer. I've got a great, uh, uh, before I get to, uh, Mona's question, she's got a really good one here, but you know, Kelly made a point, I believe somewhere in her question about, well, you know, she just wants to kind of get on the board, so to speak, and get a few clients. You know, I used to volunteer my voice and that goes a long way. And the reason is you don't want to say, okay, I'll do your voiceover for 10 bucks. That's a whole different thing. But if you volunteer for something that you're passionate about, like a nonprofit, uh, you know, more times than not, that comes back to you in paying gigs. I can't tell you how many times I volunteered for a charity and they called me back months later with an actual paid gig. So not only are you getting your feet wet and you're getting some experience, but these people are coming back to you on a regular basis and hiring you for real work. Plus, you know, you're single-handedly making the world a better place. So why the hell not, right? All right, Mona, how do you balance having a day job that is a huge commitment with going into voiceovers, creating a demo, getting coaching, et cetera. Well, you, you can do it in the evening. The beauty of doing voices, voiceovers from home is you, you, you eventually will become your own boss and you can record in the morning, in the afternoon, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. It really, I mean, you make your own hours. Uh, as far as the learning process and getting coaching and going classes, I mean, you know, there are many coaches that'll work in the evening. Uh, <clears throat> hint, hint, Tawny and Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Terry, Terry likes to go to bed early, but I prefer to do very early morning hours or business hours. But uh, that's a great question, Mona, because it's like, I mean, I we currently do work with a lot of people that have daytime jobs 
and we coach them when they either get home, sometimes even on a Saturday morning. So there's always a way to work around that. We're, we're very, very flexible. So that is a great question. We Jerry, are, can, I, can I add to that a little bit? Yes, please do. I, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're first starting out in voiceover, you know, you're going to have a full-time job and the voiceover is going to be like the hobby or it's going to be the part-time job. Yeah. And, and you eventually want to transition so that it becomes your full-time job. And it's mm-hmm. tough. I can understand, you know, you work nine to five or whatever the hours are that you work and you come home at the end of the day. It's, it's hard to, as I say, it's hard to break the gravitational pull of the couch, you know, but you have to ask yourself, who do you want to be five years down the road? I mean, do you want to be punching a clock? sitting at a desk or God forbid, a cubicle or something like that, working for somebody else, or do you want to be working from home? And, and if that, if that means more to you, you know, being your own boss, if, if that means more to you than, than working the nine to five Monday through Friday gig, then that's what you have to focus on. And it's going to suck. It's going to, it's going to be tiring. You know, it, it's not easy to come home at the end of the day and then sit down in your, you know, your little converted closet and start auditioning, but that's what it's going to take to get moving in this business. And then hopefully by, by doing that, the grind, by, by working, doing the work, doing the effort, that's when you start getting clients and that's when they start coming back. And that's when the, you know, the, the momentum starts moving and eventually you can transition so that that part-time job becomes the full-time job. And eventually you'll get to the point where you can just say, Hey, you know, I'm making enough now part-time with the voiceover business that I don't need this other job anymore. And you can cut, you know, but it's tough. And yeah, and if, go ahead, Tony. Oh, cool. Thank you. If I can add to that, like just as from coming from more of a business background, that's going to be what, if you want to own your own business, that's what this is. And that's not a departure from any other business. That's going to be retail. That's going to be a cosmetologist. That's going to be a massage therapist. You are going to be working full time and then you're going to be building your business on the side. And it's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of sleepless nights. The first year is really rough and then you build it up and then you get to enjoy it after that. And that's just what it takes. And if you want it, you can do it. Absolutely. And going back to Rob was talking about part-time. What's interesting about this industry is you can make full-time money being a part-time voice actor. If you've got like six or seven clients, big clients that again are using you on a regular basis. I mean, it doesn't, it's not like you have to put in 50 hours a week to, uh, to make this work. Bree made a comment and said, uh, I'd like to put this on the back of a bumper sticker. She said, there's no crying in voice acting. (laughs) Yeah, No crying in voice acting. The no Unless crying in voice acting? That's my bad Tom Hanks impression. Unless they ask her crying. Then I can cry. <laughs> right. If the client if that's on the client direction above the script, yeah, we'd like you to we'd like you just to ball like a baby while you read the script. <laughs> There's weird things. Uh, my friend Heather Costa, who is a very successful voice actor who just moved out to uh, L.A., she actually had the weirdest client. She got paid by a client to sniff and sneeze. <laughs> I, I kid you not. She does a great job telling the story, too. She, he, he was almost like he had a and he, he kept coming back. I mean, he paid her and she would record this, but he was pretty sure that he had a sneeze fetish. <laughs> So funny. You know, I guess, you know, whatever pays the bills. I mean, who says that we have to sit there and read commercials, narrations, or theme parks and uh, announcements. If you want to pay me to to sniff and sneeze for 20 minutes, (laughs) I'll be glad to record that and send you the MP3 and I'll give you my PayPal link. Oh yeah. I ain't picky. Yeah. We'll, we'll do whatever you want, but (laughs) all right. So I'm going to take a couple more questions here, but I do want to encourage people uh, you know, because I know a lot of people came from voiceover camp and, and a couple others that, that were on my list for many, many years. Uh, Rob, Tani and myself, we're going to be around uh, for a little while after the webinar. And I want to encourage people who are really passionate about getting off the fence and actually moving north with uh, some voice acting training to message us privately on Facebook. And we'll be happy to share the website and answer any questions. Again, we don't want to do it here because I don't want to make this a big kind of salesy kind of thing. I really wanted to make this more of a fun, loving (laughs) Q&A thing, but I'm not afraid to uh, mention that we do have some terrific programs. So I do hope you take us up on that. Uh, Let's take a couple more questions. No, Dan, Dan Harcourt is accusing me of having too much beer. No such thing. (laughs) 
No, no <laughs> such thing. It's uh, it's not Saturday yet, Dan. No, but I've been up since 5 a.m., so I might sound a little goofy, but. Uh, you Dan, naturally sound goofy. Dan's a good dude. Uh, he's been, uh, we've been chatting a little bit back and forth. Uh, let's take a couple more uh, questions. Anybody want to take a live question? Because we can take one more before we slowly say goodnight here. Uh, just raise the virtual. Jeremy Dean. Did we have him on yet, guys? I don't think we have. Nope. All right. Hang on, Jeremy. Good evening, Jeremy Dean. I almost said you're on the air. Oh, my God. Does that outdate me a little bit? You don't say you're on the air during a webinar. <laughs> Hello, caller. All right, Jeremy, are you there? Sometimes the mics just don't come unmuted, so I don't know if they're just on a call or whatnot. But we do have some terrific people in here. We've got about 37 people on the call. And if, by the way, if you're not in VoiceOver Camp, the Facebook group, we would love to have you join. Just send us a request. Just do a search for VoiceOver Camp on Facebook. Tawny, do you know the URL for to get to the exact group? Because there's some people that are in this webinar that aren't in our group. To the VoiceOver Camp group specifically, that URL? Yes. I can get it. It's a little goofy because it does the numbers thing on Facebook. I think, don't, don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's facebook.com slash groups slash voiceover camp. I think you can get there using that. I'm about to find out. Uh, <laughs> if not, you can use that little search bar, that little search bar in Facebook, and you can look up voiceover camp. Many of you uh, found out about this through voiceover camp. This is semi exclusive to that lovely group that we have. Uh, that but if you're facebook.com slash groups slash slash voiceover camp, I talk for a living. Oh, Hannah, <laughs> thank you. Hang on a minute. It's actually going to pop up in the question box as soon as I respond to Hannah here. Uh, there we go. Uh, yep. Facebook.com slash groups slash voiceover camp. All one word that will uh, definitely take you there. Uh, that really is a great resource too for, for asking questions and, and finding out, you know, uh, more information about the voiceover business, you know, in a really kind of a low impact way. It's a great way yeah. to, 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 to study up. It, it really is. And plus it's a good, it's a good way to keep up with our classes too, because sometimes people don't get the emails, but then they'll see my post in voiceover camp saying, don't forget about tomorrow. I sent the script to your inbox. That's the reason why uh, you probably see too many of my posts <laughs> on there, but Hey, you know what? I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, being a, a part of this webinar. Again, if you're interested in hearing about our newly uh, revamped, is that the right word I'm looking for? Uh, voice, voiceover training programs, you can message Tawny, Rob, or myself on Facebook. Uh, Rob Marley, Tawny Plattis, or Terry Daniel, myself, we'd be happy to answer any questions and, and send you the, the link to our our newly designed website. I wish Josh Risser would have been here tonight. He probably had other things to do, but he is our official web designer. So of course, if you've been through training and you've got kick-ass demos that are already working well for you, but you don't have a website, you know, we can help you with that as well. Uh, I want to thank you, Rob, for being a part of this. Tawny, you were a rock star on this. Uh, I'll start with Tawny. Do you have any closing words for everybody? Uh, just closing words would be to add us on voiceover camp. If you're not already in voiceover camp, feel free to add us on Facebook message us me specifically. I'll take responsibility for that. You can bug me anytime and I'm happy to help you answer any questions. And you guys were wonderful. Thank you so much for showing up and asking such great questions. I thought everybody had really insightful things that they were asking. Yeah, absolutely. Rob, any closing words from you, my friend? Yeah, I'm I, just like everybody has said, I'm I'm always happy to answer any questions. So look me up on Facebook and and hit me up. I'm I'm always happy to to help out somebody and and you know, anything I can do to help out. I'm always there. You can also send us an email. Tawny, can you put that in the question box? It's contact at voiceovertraining.info. The email address is contact at voiceovertraining.info. We like promoting Facebook, too, because it's just an easy way to chat. You know, it's sometimes it's better than being on the phone, at least at first. And we're it's we answer quickly and we're very accessible. But if you're not a Facebook messenger person, uh, we won't take it personally. We respect that. And you can certainly send us uh, an email as well. And that is one second. Doing this as I go. 
You can see Tawny's uh, comment there. I just said thank you. Contact at voiceovertraining.info. But, of course, feel free to message us on Facebook. Uh, you know, we'll do one of these uh, every quarter, maybe. I, I don't know when. I don't know when the next one's going to be. I mean, those of you that are already on my coaching roster, this doesn't really qualify for one of your voiceover group classes. This is just kind of a free-for-all, fun-loving uh, voiceover test drive Q&A because I know that there's people in voiceover camp and people that we deal with on a regular basis that are always ask, asking us about, you know, how to get started in voiceovers and what's worked for you. Can you give me a few tips? You know, I've been wanting to do this for a hundred years. I mean, we've heard it all and uh, we respect the fact that you're passionate. It's passionate people that we love to work with. So I hope you hit us up after the webinar as well. Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you being a part of it. Uh, have a great evening. I'm going to close down the webinar uh, slowly but surely, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you very soon. We'll see you in voiceover camp, too. Have a great week, everybody.